So, thank you very much, Professor Arbor, for this extremely rich lecture where you touched upon many very important issues. So this was really the big picture. You even touched upon the question whether immortality is something we should strive for. It may be possible to do it in some way or the other, but it's against the rules of evolution. Eh? So we could explore that a bit later. So I invite uh, remarks, questions. We are uh, well in time, so to speak, so we can have a good discussion on that. Eh? Is there anybody who would like to raise a question? Otherwise, I will take the privilege of the chair. But uh, let me look around. So maybe I, I'll, I'll start the discussion off, Professor Arba. So you talked about, uh, in a way, that Mother Nature only rarely creates genetic innovations. Eh? So it comes in a very random way, of course. And uh, the question is, or my question would be, in times of disruptive environmental change, so which we experienced, uh, many times in the planetary history, can we say that there is accelerated innovation also at the micro level, at the bacterial level, at the viral level, or do we have no indication of that? So that would be my question. My, from my insights as a microbiologist, I came to the conclusion, together with some other colleagues, that in a way, it is fantastic. Uh, the living world is just one world. We have a common language, we can exchange information, so on. But we should be very careful not to make a genetic variation too frequently, because a majority of novel genetic variants are detrimental, are not viable under the given conditions. Therefore, uh, for me, it's a miracle how nature succeeded to have specific genes which are expressed rarely and uh, very inefficiently make arrangements in the cell. Other genes which inhibit the import of foreign genes, uh, for example, restriction modification systems in bacteria. So it's just a wonderful thing if one sees how nature manages uh, for many, many million years uh, to have living life and adapting to changing living conditions. What you're saying is that there is this balance uh, between innovation and conservation, if you like. Uh, it has worked out for many million years. Now I have two questions from the floor, so let's pass it as Gupta first and then our Chancellor, Marcelo sanchez Saron. Well, thank you very much. Let's lead up uh, to uh, Jan's questions. Um, is there any um, sense that you have as to whether the kinds of problems that we are going to study, studying here today uh, is leading to a bias in the direction of uh, subsequent adaptation? Uh, Professor Schulenhuber talked about the speed and asked after the mm -hmm. speed I'm talking about. Now I'm asking after the, whether there is any bias the direction of evolutionary change. Okay, uh, I was looking in the microbial world whether I f would find some indication that bacteria have sensors uh, to see, oh, they are now in another habitat and are guiding specific mutation to get better living conditions. I never found these things, um, and I think it is not logic for the living world to do that. Uh, I mentioned before, I'm very uh, impressed to see that worldwide uh, living conditions uh, are the same, uh, the, it functions. I wonder also whether if ever life is found on exoplanets, whether there are the same laws, 
I think it should, because probably life existence depends on uh, building blocks of matter, and mat we also are constructed from matter. So, but this is some open question. It will be very interesting to see whether if life will be found in some decades or even later on some exoplanet, how it works there. Just a, a remark before Marcelo, you intervene. Uh, uh, the, science, the science now knows that there are probably 20 billion Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone. So there's plenty of chance to develop something like life but we have never received any signals so far. Marcelo, it's your turn. I was very admired about your conclusion that uh, of the genetic point of view, if I understand well, yeah. it's impossible to have some kind of immortality or some kind of this. Because there are some literature today, like the book of Homo Deus that is very, very popular that the Dr. Harari that we, that say that we can have a sort of amortality, that is to say we live. What is your, this is very interesting. Yes, I. Of course, a priest, I, I reflected <laughs> on that. And um, I think, you know, um, genetic variation, novel mutations, uh, in a way, if it, should serve an individual uh, species for their life, it should be carried in the genome. And as far as we know, uh, in eukaryotic multicellular organisms, the uh, original genome is not available in somatic cells anytime. And even if a gene would integrate somewhere in the genome of a, of, of, of a, a cellular um, or a genome, uh, it, it wouldn't be uh, given to the progeny. So it, it doesn't make sense for, nat for the natural uh, process of living and organisms of, of uh, and their uh, evolution to have a permanent structure which never dies. It, it would not be adaptable to novel living conditions. Uh, well, yeah. Thank you very much. Professor von Braun. Um, Werner, as you know, the um, uh, humankind changes its habitat very rapidly. We live in cities more and more. The great minority, majority of us uh, will live in cities in the next decades. And that is combined with the um, uh, pollution and uh, and. Uh, environmental change. Wouldn't it by implication, extrapolating uh, from your um, very interesting uh, presentation, wouldn't it require that we uh, design that habitat as species rich and as natural, in quotation marks, as possible in order to facilitate future smooth evolution of humankind? Well, we should, we should avoid to take off humankind uh, specifically, because as I mentioned, uh, w there is a multiple dependency on the rich biodiversity around us. Therefore, we cannot sort out the human. We could, if for example, the climate change uh, is worsening, gets hotter and hotter and hotter, we will find some regions on this planet uh, which has a less uh, temperature. 
so we could migrate there. But we cannot expect that the whole biodiversity would do that. Yeah. Uh, so it, I don't see how, how that can function. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, you and Celine. Uh, with the advancement of medicine, you look at the precision medicine or stem cell development, or organ transplant and all those things. Doctor will always tell me that the, if you are lazy, you will leave the earth earlier. If you come to take exam more frequently, it's not easy to die. Well, my question is, if medical advances is such that we can prolong our life ever and ever, is it moral? Or how long should we live on the surface of the earth? Well, you know, uh, at some previous meetings, I mentioned that we should uh, avoid to have a, a steady, continuous increase of the human population to uh, overpopulate the planet. And if we have uh, eternal life of human beings, you cannot have children. You cannot reproduce yourself because uh, the, the planet is full of human beings. We cannot host many, many more for, for a thousand years. Okay, so I think, uh, so maybe a, a, a final question which is touching upon what uh, Chancellor uh, Sanchez Sorondo also, you were alluding to Marcelo to Homo Deus, you know, this very popular book and the whole question about human enhancement or even substitution of humanity by artificial intelligence. Uh, and some people are working very hard on that. Actually, it's not just uh, hype. The question is, of course, whether this artificial life would need natural living conditions anymore. So climate change wouldn't matter at all, actually, if you would have this artificial life in an artificial world. So. Professor Abba, do you have any reflections on that? Well, so far it is possible to construct in the laboratory artificial um, molecules doing something and actually research in this field has been, is being done. Not very intensively so far, but that can uh, continue and getting stronger and stronger. But um, making a new kind of living being, uh, I would have a hard time to know what should be in, all that, in that genome, which um, is novel, original, and certainly it will contain some known gene already. Otherwise, it w would probably not function. But um, I, I don't think that on the level of organisms we should take serious uh, steps to trying to do that, but at the level of molecules, uh, that's all right, you know, that uh, you, you can make that for also technological applications. Yeah. So I hope you are right. and. Uh, Evol artificial evolution will not be too quick, actually. So thanks a lot for the discussion. We'll <laughs>